Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunder Skies. In the last episode we had a look around the floating parliament. We can become an MP if we've managed to find Puderance, but I think a more immediate concern that I need to take care of is the fact that we don't have any fuel, and if I remember correctly, they don't sell any here. So I think we need to go back to London. Hey, for once it is actually London. Who saw that coming? What about prospects right now? They need Bronzewood for Parliament. We don't have any Bronzewood, do we? We only have four. Three tea for the sun? We Can we buy tea here? No, it's, it's nostalgic crockery, isn't it? It did outlaw tea, though. So we could buy one more. And try and take it to the sun. That seems like a good idea. Ideally, I should probably buy them all, but I don't have enough money, so I'm just going to buy the one. <laughs> right, let's. That's our. That's our current goal. Let's see if we can get back to London. Shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully, we'll find some free fuel on the side of the road, or something along those lines. That should help us survive this trek. We might come across some marauders. They would also drop us some fuel, but otherwise I'm not even really sure what my plan is for this episode. Oh, hello, you're a cantankery. You, do, you don't drop fuel. I mean, you might drop money. Is he just out of range? Ooh, that would have been close. Um, I'm not really sure what my plan is. It might just be look around, assuming we, uh, we don't die. Um, let's listen to its last complaint. Its parting grumble is bitter and mournful. Your crew share tales of the Cantankery to distract them from the noise. The Cantankery grumbles at length, in no apparent discomfort, until its abrupt final silence. I heard, says the solemn junior signaller, that when their woe was dying, they didn't fix it. Or try to leave. It just burrowed into its crust and slept until at the end. It crumbled around them, and they woke amongst its fragments. Well, it's oddly poetic. There's also no way to prove if that's actually true, but I'd quite like to know... Uh, I don't actually know where the Cantankery came from. I'm sure... I'm sure it's an interesting story. Maybe it'll come up. <laughs> there is stuff in the Royal Edition. Or the Sovereign Edition, sorry. That I've never seen. But there could potentially be storylines and things that I'm just going to come up against. Why are you flying so strange? Are you a guest? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. Ugh. Being in front of this thing is the worst place to be. Ow. Okay. Okay, that really hurt. I. Do you know what? We're running away. Ow. Goodbye. Evasive maneuvers. Full steam ahead. It, is it faster than me? Uh oh. This could be an issue, guys. <laughs> I I strongly dislike the guests. It's still coming, isn't it? It is. It's still coming. Oh my god. Okay. 
Yes, we are low on fuel. I am aware of that. Thank you, Incognito Princess. I have greater things to worry about. The weird tentacles in the rearview mirror being one of the main concerns we are currently facing. Oh no, discontent. Lovely. Um, an engineer cries out her voice hoarse as a professional mourner. Yes. Um, let's set a watch on the stars. Is it true? Are the stars disappearing? Oh, my, my terror is quite high. Let's just dispense an additional ration and put ourselves in a particularly horrible situation. The prospect of brandy provokes a ragged cheer. Soon, the crew have rosy faces and broad smiles. Your locomotive resounds to a lusty, if approximate, rendition of how the Zaylers lost their Zs. No one looks out of the windows, though. No one looks at the stars. Good. The stars are evil. Okay, so we have no supplies and no fuel. We might be in trouble. We also have no hull, which is also quite dangerous. A uh, little, maybe don't crash the ship, an iron, maybe just, oh god. A commotion in the cabins. A stoker has discovered a creature wrapped affectionately around his Toby jug. A gift from his aunt. The creature is as long as your arm and looks like a leech bred with an eel. It's one of the guests. The guests are drawn to glimmers of sentiment in the broad hard skies. One attracts others, until they f will fill a locomotive like meat fills a sausage. By the time they move on, you will have all been mashed to paste. Well, we have to, uh, we have to conduct a thorough search here. If there's one, there may already be more. No one knows how the guests communicate with each other across such vast distances, but somehow word gets out. Oh no, we failed. This is really bad. Your crew are thorough, even stripping panels from the walls to check the cavities behind. They locate and expel nearly half a dozen of glistening, coiling creatures. Was that all of them? There's no way to be sure. Oh, no. This is so undeniably bad. My terror is really high as well. Like if we can just make it back to London. I don't really know of any reliable ways of reducing my terror inside of Albion. That's something I should really try and find, huh? Otherwise we might be in trouble. I really hope we have enough fuel here. I think we will. I always look at the map and think it's closer than it is, though. Sixty-six percent. Well, we've made it from there to here, so in theory we should be okay. Do you think taking guests back to London will get me put on the naughty list? Because you'd think maybe they'd attack us, and then maybe attack other vessels around us? I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't think I've ever had a guest infestation on my ship before. Maybe it's going to start killing people. Not necessarily a problem. If we can replace them. Okay, wait, okay, this is London. My terror is still going up. But we are indeed close. 44% in the barrels. 30% of fuel, uh, of food, huh? Look, guys, this is the station. Just hold your nerve. Hold your nerve. Okay, Terra's no longer going up. That was... I did not see that. That almost killed us. It's fine. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Plenty of health. Oh, look at Loda. Terra. Right, we have no money. Which is a bit of a problem. Since we need to, uh, you know, buy fuel and 
food. And... We do have a prospect, though, which will make us money. So let's let's focus on that, and let's try and repair the ship, shall we? Uh, oh God, where is that? I guess the steam and sapphire yards. Can we repair our locomotive? How much is this going to cost me? 141? Nothing to worry about. Who needs money anyway? Do I have port reports? I'm going to go speak to the um, ministry. There we go. Oh my god, I completely forgot what they were called. The ministeries. I'm going to see if we can hand it in. It's kind of annoying because I can hand them in at the stalwart bookkeeper that's at London. But that's not necessarily the faction I kind of want to talk to, so... It's the lazy way. I don't think it's the best way. I have a funny feeling they're the liberation of night. Which is... A bit of a strange faction. Don't like sun very much. You'd think they'd love the uh, clockwork sun, but I guess... No one likes the clockwork sun. How far away is the clockwork sun from here? Because that's where we're going. I'm going to need more fuel, aren't I? Oh dear. Hopefully I have port reports to hand in, so I can make some money. I should have the floating parliament, and... the work world? He listens intently, writing notes on a pad of paper. His comments are absolutely neutral. And we gained a hundred sovereigns. We gained one ministerial quest. Did I only have one? I didn't have two. Oh dear. I can get a ministerial stamp stamped permit. That could be useful. But I'm gonna save it up for now. Uh, do you sell fuel here? You don't. Okay, so we got a hundred. I'm gonna spend that money right away on fuel and food. And then we're gonna go on an incredibly arduous journey. Uh, to the sun to sell this tea for probably not all that much money, and it's probably not worth it. Now I think about it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It'd be nice if we could have more than one thing sell. That is outside of my control. There might be other stuff around near the sun, but I don't think there is. We have a lot of Albion to still search. There's going to be something here, here, here and here, I imagine. We'll, we'll find it. A vagabond inhales. He really has to stop breathing this stuff. He is not going to survive. He's breathing lungfuls of this smog every single time. He is going to die. Shops, uh, Springfield's Market. Let's. Ooh, okay. Uh, well, food is more. Fuel is more important than food, so let's do that. Yeah, if we run out of fuel, we're completely boned. If we run out of food, we have eight backup options. Is there a quicker way to get to the sun? I'm guessing down this way. I mean, it's possible straight down here is quicker. Should we have a look? Knowing my luck, it won't be. Locomotives scurry below. London never sleeps. Oh dear. There are guests in the galley. Our engine continues to play host to a burgeoning population of uninvited guests. This morning, a writhing torrent of the creatures poured from the pantry and oozed quickly away into their hiding spaces. They had been at the better biscuits. Oh my god. Impose a curfew on the crew? How's that going to help? The guests are drawn to companionship, forbid the crew from fraternizing. I think I need to have the Waste Waifs attention. Oh god, it's well, 17%. Let's see what happens. Oh, what a surprise we failed. Ah, ah, ah my god. Your rules are numerous. No games, no music, no jokes, no conversation after 7 o'clock. But the crew in cabin 4, will there be no harm in a 30 of midnight game of cribbage? 
a flood of enthusiastic guests flood their cabin. By the morning, the guests have gone again, leaving only the smeared remains of cabin occupants and a handful of cards. Oh my god. So we lost three crew members and two supplies. The supplies I literally just bought. Well, now we can't make the journey. Grumble, grumble, grumble. This is going to be an absolute nightmare. Is there any options at London to get rid of these guests? I have a horrible feeling the answer to that question is a resounding no. How are we lost? Right outside of London, what is going on? The sky is wrong. This is not where you were meant to be. Was it a trick of the mist? Has a wind carried you astray? Have the heavens themselves turned on their axis? Let's just see if we can press on here. Push, on, push forward into stranger skies and hope that somewhere beyond you'll find familiar territories again. You order the crew to hold the course as you transverse this uncanny fold of sky. Eventually your navigator utters a grateful oath, a landmark. You are found again. We're cursed. This is the cursed episode. This is the episode where everything goes horribly wrong. I'm going to have to sell some stuff out of the bank. It's the only way I'm going to have enough money. And that makes me angry because we needed that for other stuff. Like prospects. Uh, let's... Oh, I suppose we can probably afford to sell... I can sell straight out of the bank, can't I? I can. Let's sell some of our... Barrel of Unseasoned Hours. Let's sell like seven. Wow, I have quite a lot of money squirreled away, don't I? Good lord. Plus side, I can now buy more supplies. God, good lord. Let's set off to the sun again. And hope that the guests don't eat all of my food. Do I need more crew? He'll be fine. Famous last words right there. I'm sure we'll be fine. I mean, what are the odds we get the guests again? I've also realised that going to the sun is going to increase my terror quite substantially. And without a way to lower it, I might be in trouble. Of course, I could accept a nightmare. Might be in my best interest to do that. Accept a nightmare, then we could go back to the Reach to get rid of the said nightmare? Oh god, where am I going? Not this direction. I don't know if I have enough money to go back to the Reach. I need to see what it actually costs. I'm guessing it'll either be Barrels of Unseasoned Hours or it'll be uh, Ministry Stamped Permits. Please be away straight down. Oh, it's looking promising. This will save some time off the old journey. If it is indeed a path. Oh, <laughs> there goes the sound of London. It, it freaks me out knowing that we just have guests on board. And there's an invisible dice just being rolled in the background. Okay, we should just be able to go straight down. This is a nice route to the sun, actually. I should mean there's no marauders here. London falters here. The sky becomes stony. Its paths barred by sudden crags. No more excit excitement in this episode, please. What's this? Is this a saying? I think it is. But I'm going to double check. A building of weathered bricks. Yeah, we don't have a saying, I'm afraid. Oh, it was relatively peaceful so far. Do you think it's quicker to go down this way? Let's check. We have the food, fuel and the food, so... Let's guess I'll have to double back. I'd like to find the quickest route to every location if I can, because it does... It, it can be the difference between dying and surviving when you have no food. Hello, Ministry Monitor. What are you doing? You're not a guest, are you? No? Good. Apparently, though, this is a quicker way. 
A sound like a shower of diamonds. You have passed through a field of glass fragments. Do you reckon there's a way to lower my turret here? Oh god, stay the hell away from that. I remember flying into one of those things before. It was not fun. It is a tear in space and time. Caused by the overuse of hours, I believe, if I remember correctly. Hey look, I've just discovered the clockwork sun. Definitely been here before, game. Okay. So gentlemen, I brought you some tea. Why do they they only sell fuel here? Uh oh. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, bazaar, here we go. T tea? Oh my god, no, that's actually good money. We're clawing our way back up. The Clockwork Sun does not, of course, run on tea, but the battalion of engineers who maintain it surely must. Every month, a new tender for three caddies of dried tea is offered. Regular as, yes, Clockwork. Clockwork Sun, nice to the south. Yes, it does. A solitary foreman asks you to wheel the tea through empty corridors to a storeroom. It is stacked with identical, unopened, dust-covered crates. Either the Sun Engineers don't like tea, unthinkable, or there are fewer of them than is pursued. Yeah, I gained my 200 experience and a Ministry Stamp permit, which is worth a lot of money. Is there something we can do here? Can I go tell the man that we delivered his bowtie manuals. Let's write a port report first. Lockwork Sun is a preeminent symbol of the Empire's heavenly dominion. There we go. Uh, where was he? He was in Azimuth, was he not? The engineers wave you onward, shouting something cheerfully derogatory about the sequencer. It's mostly lost in the roar of the pistons. An enormous sundial. Right, where are you? Complete your charitable mission. Here we go. You successfully delivered the manuals to the barbers and no doubt transforming 600 lives for the better. Now they just need some bow ties. T semantics. The manual is way more important than the actual bow ties. The sequencer clasps his hands together. I can just imagine their smiles, he says. And oh, their wide, grateful eyes, and their misshapen bow ties, crying out for correction. He sends his orderlies to fetch your payment, as a glint in his eye. I knew I was right about you. The sequence brought us together for a reason. We should send another package. We should indeed, if you're going to pay me. Another crate is dropped at the sequencer's feet by his shuffling orderlies. Here, we have a collection of antique but very much functional pistols, he says brightly. I was thinking we should send them to the London Refuge for the lamentably pay parentless. I'm sure the little mites will enjoy the thrill of the hunt. You you're going to send pistols to an orphanage. Maybe send them food or medicine, or you know, just some money. <laughs> Uh, prioritize your own personal gain. What orphans really want is untraceable gold ingots. <laughs> I mean, this option here seems like the most uh, obvious answer, doesn't it? If the sequencer wants to waste your time and his, it's his prerogative, as long as he's paying. The sequencer beams. We're quiet, eh? No matter, no matter. Overruled by the sun, I expect. That's exactly what it is. And we could have a look inside the Sun Shattered Dome, but I do think I'm going to end the episode here. I'm going to try and come up with a way for us to lower our terror and maybe get rid of the guests. And maybe we'll try and do that in the next episode. I don't know. We'll, we'll work it out. But either way, thank you all very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you again to the members of the channel. It really does help keep the channel going and make these videos easier to make. And as always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>